So when it comes to design skill and creativity, there are not many people better than John Galliano. Now, John Galliano is a fashion designer, if you don't know who he is, who studied fashion design at CSM. Um, and he's best known for uh, his work at Dior mainly, but also at Givenchy. Uh, he's also currently the creative director of uh, Maison Margiela. Um, but yeah, one of the greatest couture designers of our time is definitely, like no debate, John Galliano. When it comes to skill, he is definitely up there with the greatest of them all. However, this video isn't really about the great things he's done from a design aspect. This video is more about why he's not talked about as much as he was, or why people don't hold him in such a high regard as he deserves to be from a fashion design standpoint. So, John Galliano, yes, he's a great designer, one of the best couture designers of our time, as I said. However, the problem he has is common sense and drugs. John Galliano is no stranger to drugs and I feel like his biggest problem and the issue that has held him back for so many years is drugs and every time he abuses drugs, like he takes drugs or he drinks too much alcohol, he gets into controversy after controversy and controversy is nothing new to John Galliano. There was a point in time when he was literally getting into trouble with the media every single month. But I think when all of this controversy reached this peak was in February 2011 and this is when the famous famous controversy of John Galliano came around where he basically said to a couple of people who I I'd like to if I remember correctly I think they were Jews and he basically said that he loves Nazis and he wishes that uh, they gassed that person these people and he said that if it was back then back then when the Nazis were here they would have killed all of you. I want all of you dead. That's basically what John Galliano said. Britain's Sun newspaper obtained a video of what it says is another incident at the same cafe in October. I love Hitler. See? People like you would be dead yeah. today. <laughs> your mothers, your forefathers would be <laughs> gassed. And oh, oh my God. <laughs> we have a problem. With you, yeah, I'm not with. But I think what intrigues me more, which is why I'm making this video, is what happened after he said that. Now, because he said this, rightfully so, he was fired from Dior. Um, Dior is a global brand. I don't think the creative director of a global brand should have opinions of prejudice like that, on that level. Um, so I think that was the right thing to do, Dior firing him. Although, I'm sure everyone misses him at Dior from a design aspect because he was such a good designer, I can't even... You just, objectively, you have to say he was a really good designer. He was also fined um, a lot of money, I can't remember the exact figure, and then John Galliano basically went into hiding and kind of like disappeared, and no one saw him for a long time. Now, I feel like he had a plan the whole time because what really, really annoyed me was how the fashion industry tried to clean up his mess, and they've come to his defense so many times and this time they were able to successfully clean up his mess and that's why he's now the creative director of Margiela. So basically what I'm gonna do is kind of expose how the fashion industry works and how people who are in positions of power can use fashion publications to their advantage to kind of change how people perceive them. Now, first of all, I'm gonna talk about what people were saying in his defense when this happened. So the first thing the people said in John Galliano's defense was, Oh, John Galliano was, was under the influence. He did drugs and alcohol. Uh, that's not a reflection of who he truly is. Um, okay, I've never been drunk in my life, but I doubt if I was drunk, I would ever say I love Nazis and I want Nazis to kill the Jews. That's not the type of thing that you say just because you're drunk. I think what drugs and alcohol does is it amplifies who you truly are. So opinions that when you're being rational and you're not under the influence, you wouldn't say outwardly, but you have in your head, those kind of come out when you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Um, so I don't know, that defense to me is just the most stupid thing I've ever heard in my entire life, honestly. The second thing that people are doing, so before John Galliano, no, actually after John Galliano came out of hiding and decided he wanted to, um, clear up his name. He came and he was doing all these interviews saying how like 
sorry he is and how he needs help. But we'll get into that, that narrative, the whole he needs help narrative later. How could you say that? What's your own explanation? No one, um, no one was more shocked than myself, Charlie. I mean, I just saw that footage you showed and it threw me quite. Um, at that point in my career, I had become um, what is known as a blackout drinker. It's where um, one can't transfer short-term memory into long-term memory. So I have no memory of that event. You remember um, none of these words? No. You remember being there? No. I don't even remember. I wasn't aware that I had been filmed. Here's what's troubling to some. This wasn't just one incident. It was more than one. That's correct. If somebody had come and said those things in your presence when you were sober, what would you have done? I love Hitler. Uh, I would think you should something. burn. What would you have said if you were sober? I would think there's something terribly wrong with that person, Charlie. Um, he was talking about how he needs help and how, you know, he has an issue with drugs and alcohol and he's going to rehab and blah, 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 blah. No offense, but I didn't feel any sympathy for him. And the reason I didn't was because this was not the first time that John Galliano got into trouble. This had been a thing that he had been known to do, like get drunk, do drugs and get into loads of trouble. So it's not anything new. It's not, it's not like this was a one-off. Like he's been to rehab and out so many times. So this was just another one of those, yeah, here we go again. Yeah, you're gonna go to rehab, you're gonna come out, then you're gonna do something else. And people in the fashion industry tried to use how he was painting himself as the victim when he was saying, I need help, as like, oh, you people are just too hard on him. John Galliano needs help. Oh, oh, look, obviously he's had time to think about what he did. He looks genuine. I'm sorry, but I'm not buying it. If you can only go by someone's character, if someone has done something over and over and over again, who am I to believe that he won't again? Now, John Galliano is really good friends with um, Anna Winter. Now, this is, Honestly, one of the reasons where I, this is one of the times I lost respect for Vogue. That's why people are always wondering why I never say Vogue when I talk about magazines I like. It's, I always say system ID days, it's never Vogue. I don't have respect for Vogue. First of all, well, this is not the point of the video, but like Vogue always get information wrong in the magazine anyway. It's almost like they don't proofread sometimes, it's that bad. Then secondly, Vogue has historically been used, I might get into this in a different video, it's historically been used as a magazine that people in positions of power, people with a lot of money, use it as a source to clear up their image because Vogue is a big name, a big fashion publication, so people who don't know any better believe that if Vogue are saying a certain thing, it must be true. Um, and Anna Winter kind of put in a good word for him and that's kind of one of the reasons he got his job at Margiela. But the worst of the worst of the worst when it came to the situation was an, a Vanity Fair article. And I'm gonna read some of it, but not all of it, because it's quite long. But I'm gonna put the link to this Vanity Fair article in the description below. And I prompt all of you to read how they so perfectly constructed John Galliano as a victim. Remember the situation? So two women, I think they saw John Galliano and he looked like a junk mess, so they were laughing. Obviously, you're not supposed, that's not a nice thing to do. You don't laugh at someone. However, that's not, and this is another excuse that people in fashion made for John Galliano. Apparently, because the two people were laughing at him, he was warranted to say that they should be killed by Nazis. Once again, stupid opinion. These two people were just laughing at him and then he said, I love Nazis and I wish the Nazis would kill all of you and if it was uh, some time back, all of you would be dead. Um, and some way, somehow, they found a way to paint John Galliano as a victim. So, yeah, let's just let's just go through this article real quick. Okay, so this is the article, and the title of it is called Galliano in the Wilderness. Um, and it says, The moment the video of John Galliano's anti-Semitic rant went viral, in February 2011, a brilliant career was shattered. Can it be repaired? Talking to the 52-year-old designer in his first interview since he was fired from Dior and his first ever interview sober, 
Ingrid Siski learns about Galliano's spiral of addiction, his efforts to atone and the forces and foibles that might explain his shocking act of self-destruction. So you can see what they've done here. They've said, they said it's an act of self-destruction. They've said, what are his efforts to atone and the forces and foibles. So what, what that actually says is there are some things working against him that led him to this point in his life. And now, while I'm not gonna read this article actually, cause I just, it'll just be too long and it's actually quite annoying. Just reading the article is so annoying. But now you guys can see how, when people have friends and are friends with the people at the top of publications like Vogue and Vanity Fair, these publications can be bought and these publications can be used to change the narrative that some people are looking at or the common narrative that people have about a certain person and this is exactly the case with Vanity Fair and that's why they found a very creative way to say that John Galliano in this article if you read it was shattered and life took him hard and that's what led him to you know the position that he started saying things like Nazi should have killed these women and and yeah, it just doesn't sit right with me It doesn't sit right with me that what John Galliano did. Yes, he's a good designer But we also can't just excuse all bad behavior just because oh, yeah, he's a good designer So let's let him get away with murder. I don't think that's how this world should function It's the same thing Bill Cosby was a really good comedian, but when we found out what he did then we're like, okay maybe let's stop supporting this guy because he's a bit you know, he's a bit of a problem. So the bottom line is, the interview that he did with Vanity Fair was the most commissioned thing I've ever seen in my whole life. And ultimately, everyone makes mistakes, but some mistakes need to be looked deeper at than others. I mean, I can make a mistake by like, dropping your phone out of my hands and your phone smashes. And yes, it's a genuine mistake that people can make. That's a bit different to being a paedophile or like being a murderer and then people are like, oh, but everyone makes mistakes. Some mistakes are kind of, they're kind of above some other mistakes. And they also tried to push this narrative in this article, they were like, something that they used a lot was second chance. John Galliano deserves a second chance. He needs a second chance. Give him a second chance. Now, I don't know why they said that because John Galliano was someone who always got into trouble. So it's not like this was the first time. They love to use this narrative like this was the only time he got into trouble when he had been getting into trouble his whole career. So this whole second chance thing, it doesn't make sense when he's been given second chances over and over and over again. This was just the tipping point. And the reason I know John Galliano leverages his connections is if you guys actually do your research and I'll, I won't even like tell you where to find this but I'll give you the nuggets. One of the reasons John Galliano actually got his job at Givenchy is due to him leveraging the connections of people he knew that were on top of big fashion publications. I'm not going to tell you who exactly I'm talking about. I want to see who the first person is, who can comment down below, who I'm talking about that John Galliano used that's on top of a high, well was on top of a high fashion publication that was one of the reasons why he got the job at Givenchy. And as much as John Galliano is a genius in terms of fashion design and he revolutionized fashion definitely, especially from a couture standpoint, the issue I have is when someone can just go into hiding for a bit, leverage his friends and get these people to paint like some change the narrative and get him to seem like the victim and he just comes back and acts sober and all this stuff and then they manage to get him this job at Margiela. When it's that easy for someone to say stuff like that and do the type of things he does and then shortly after he's getting a job at Margiela, what the message that sends to the rest of the world and the rest of the fashion industry is if you're big enough and you have enough power, anything goes and you can say whatever you want and you can do whatever you want and there's no consequences for your action and we, we shall excuse all your behavior. That's what it says to me. And now to all the John Galliano defenders, they have something they love saying and what they always say is, oh, this situation happened so many years ago. He's changed, he's a changed man. Okay, let me give you an analogy. 
Um, someone who's a paedophile is someone who is sexually attracted to kids. So if you know that someone has gone to prison for, I don't know, raping a child or whatever, even if he went to prison for raping a child 10 years ago, if you know that this man was jailed for raping a child and he's a paedophile, you will not let this guy around your kids, whether it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years, 40 years. So this whole narrative and this stupid point that, oh, what John Galliano did, this whole situation, it was like so many years ago, it doesn't make sense. If you know someone's character, you have to be wary about the person. You have to move different when you're around that person because you know what they're capable of. So that point, because I know people are going to comment that down below in the comment section. So I thought I'd just use that analogy perfectly. But yeah, on that note, tell me what you guys think of uh, John Galliano and this situation. And yeah, follow me on Instagram at Fashion Roadman. If you want to support the channel financially, then... The Patreon is in the description below. Definitely read the article. Definitely, it's such a good read from like a standpoint of how, I don't know how they managed to make him the victim. That The skill that was involved in that. But yeah, <laughs> subscribe to this channel, like this video, and stay tuned for more videos.